got my application with authentication using Azure B2C, and this is hosted on Azure Static Web Apps. But I've also got an API as part of this application, and this is hosted using Azure Functions. How can I secure the functionality of my API and tie this in with the Azure B2C authentication? Let's go take a look. Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, whenever it is that I find you, and welcome along to the channel. And if you're new here, we look at all things IT from solutions, tutorials, tips, tricks, you name it. So today we are looking at securing our Azure Functions API that we've got as part of this solution using Azure B2C. So the first thing we need to do is jump over into the Azure B2C portal and we need to go and register a new application that's going to represent our API. So let's give that a meaningful name. And we want this radio button checked accounts in any identity provider. We don't need a redirect and we do want to grant permissions. So let's just go and register that. And we'll make a note of this client ID, the all important client ID that you need whenever you're doing anything with Open ID Connect. And then we need to go and add some scopes to it. So we go to expose an API and let's add a scope. Change this to something a bit more meaningful. And then let's add a scope name. So just some permission in your application that you want to give it. And let's go and add another one of email access to say that we can send an email. So we've got a couple of scopes that we can allow our application to have permission to. So let's jump back over to our app and We can see our API there and we can see our two permissions. And that's it. We've granted our application access to our API and it's going to get these two scopes or it's allowed to use these two scopes if they're requested by this application is what we've done there. So that's the Azure B2C bit done so we can jump over to our application and if you're not caught up on this and you want to find out how we did the Azure B2C I'll put a link in the description and at the top so that you can catch up with that so that you can see how some of this works. We've got our sign in composable so in here is where we're already requesting the scopes of OpenID and profile so what I need to do is come back over here and just copy that scope and pop it in here and we will have the email one as well so let's do that so now we're requesting that our application also get these two scopes for permission on the our api so now that we've got an api we need to go into our store that we created as part of the authentication tutorial we've got our auth store here that stores the current user that's logging in what we also want to store here now as well as the current user is an access token. ID tokens represent the user. Access tokens are used to authenticate yourself with the API. So that's what we're using here. And then we need to add that access token into here so that we have that available to us in our store state. And then inside of our actions after our update current user, we are going to have a new action to get or refresh the API access token. And what is this going to do? So the first thing this is going to check is if the application token is not equal to null. So we've already got an access token. So we'll come back to that. Let's go and get one in the first place. So we create a token request object with the scopes that we need. And that scope is wrong. That should be that. And then once we've set up that, we can get our MSAL object out of our Nuxt application, as we've done elsewhere. We can set the account 
to be the current user, then we can make a call to mSAL to acquire the token silently using that token request. So it's going to go and make an access token request for those two scopes. And obviously we need to do something when that comes back. So let's do the other half of our promise. So inside our promise, we need to first go and check if the Azure B2C has returned as an empty access token. And if that's the case, then we need to invoke the interactive authentication. So the way that we do that is to throw a new interaction required auth error. And that's complaining because I need to import that from Azure mCell common. And of course we need our else that says we actually did get an access token back. So we store that in our store. And then we need to actually catch some errors that might go on here. So we've got a catch clause. So the first thing we do is log something out. Then we check if the error that's come back is a type of interaction required. And so we then change our direction and try and instead of trying to get the token silently, we do it via a redirect, which will then pop something up on the UI for the user. And if that's not the case, then we just log the error out. And then the last thing that we need to do inside of this action is actually return the access token back to whatever's calling this particular action. So uh, let's just jump back up now and fix up this first bit. So if we already do have an access token, we need to see whether or not we need to refresh it. So if it's expired, so we're going to pause the JWT token. We are going to get the current time and let's just log that for information. We then check if the current time is before the expiry. And if it is, then we can return the current access token. And if it isn't, then we say that we are actually going to go and request the access token. So that gives us a method that we can use across our application to, as it says, get or refresh our API access token. Let's jump over to our composable where we call our API. So we have this composable call API that calls our API. And we're going to implement a new method in here to call a protected API because we need to do some, some different things. So let's import our auth store and let's move things around a little bit. So let's move that constant out because we need it in both places. And then let's implement a new method in here called call protected API. So this is our B2C if we want to call a B2C protected API function. So we're going to get hold of our auth store for starters. And then we're going to call our auth store get or refresh API access token to actually get an access token. And let's just log that out so that we can see what that looks like. And then we've got our actual API call. So we've got a fetch call on the path that's passed in plus the prefix. Then we're passing in the request body and we're also attaching an authorization header which has got our API access token as a bearer token. And we're forcing this to always be a post in our case, but you may want something different. So that gives us a method that we can now call across our API to call a B2C protected API that will pass in our access token along with that request. So let's go and actually use that. So let's jump into this restricted component. So we know that this restricted component is only used if you're actually logged in. So let's go and add some stuff in here. So we're going to actually have a data object that we return from our API that we can see. Let's go and add that into our script down here. So we've got our data object and then we'll in the on mounted event, we will check if we're logged in. And if we're logged in, we will try and make an API call. And let's just put the catch in for that. So we'll catch and log the error. And inside the try, let's put the call to our call protected API. That's the name of the actual API function that we want to call. And we're just going to post in some data. So I'm going to give it a name. So I'm expecting 
this protected function to return some message plus the name. It's our usual echo kind of API call that we're doing here just to prove the point. So that's it for our Nuxt application. So now we can turn our attention over to our API. So let's close some of this out. And let's just go and create a new function in here. So let's go, where should we go? Let's put it right at the bottom. So in here, we've got a new function called my protected function, which is an HTTP post. So what are we going to do in here? We are first of all going to deserialize the body of the request, then we'll validate that. So if we don't have any data, then we'll respond accordingly with some kind of error message. If we get past that, then we can check if it's got a name property that's being passed in. And if it has, then we will create a new response message that contains hello and the data name. So as we were passing in Jimmy, we'd expect it to say hello, Jimmy. And then lastly, we do our response processing. So we've got our response object here that we are then serializing back. And we're saying that we're returning JSON and we're saying that we're returning a 200 response here. So that's a simple function that just shows us that we can turn some data around and send it back to the client. But how do we actually do the Azure B2C piece? I'm going to use a library from GitHub. So credit goes to whoever created this isolated functions authentication GitHub repository. This gives us a nice package essentially that we can use inside of our Azure functions. But I'm going to make some changes as, as we'll see. So let's jump back over. I'm going to create a new folder in the solution called isolated function auth. And I've downloaded that repository. So I'm just going to copy everything out the source folder for now. And then I'm going to make a few changes. So I don't need the host. I don't need the local settings. I'm basically not running this as an Azure function. So it's, it's set up currently as an Azure function. And what I want is a library so that I can include it in my Azure function. So let's get rid of the CS proj as well. And that should do me. So then I can go to that folder and do a .NET new class lib in here. And then I can get rid of the default class that it adds. Okay, so now I've got a default class library. So I can go and add in some dependencies. So I'm going to add in the functions worker, the open ID connect some JWT stuff so that I can do that and also the JSON library so that I can work with those. So those are the dependencies that I've got for this particular class library. And these dependencies came out of the original project. So I'm just reintroducing those, but without the Azure functions dependencies. Okay. I think we're about there. So over in our API CS proj, I can go and add a reference now into our isolated function auth folder and the isolated function auth project or class library just to pull that in. So now over in our program CS, we need to add in this function auth. And the place where we're going to do that is in this configure functions worker defaults. So we're going to change that so that that takes an options pattern. And we pull in our isolated functions middleware for those. So that resolves those. Then we need to change our local settings just so that this works locally. We obviously need to configure these inside Azure for the actual application, Azure Static Web Apps, where all these properties live. I'm going to add in these two properties, Authentication Authority, which should be Smart and Systems 1, B2C Login, da, 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 B2C. Yep, that looks correct for our sign-in flow that we're using. And then I need the actual client ID that I saved from earlier when we registered our application, which just to recap comes from our the registration of our API. And it's this client ID here that you need. Let's just run up our API. So over here, let's start our API up and we'll just test this from an API perspective at the moment. So that's up and running and we can see that we've got some existing functions as well as our new one that we've added. So I can come over to Thunder Client and call one of our existing functions that we've got. So I've got an API version function. So let's just send in that, which is a get request. And we can see that whereas that would have worked historically, 
now I'm getting a 401 unauthorized. So it's kind of a problem in the fact that the introduction of that isolated function auth has now protected every single function in our API, which may or may not be what you want. And it's it's not what I want in my case, because I want certain functions like just getting the version. I don't need to protect that. I don't, I'm not worried if people get the version of my API. So let's first off go and fix up this particular issue so that we can call these unprotected ones. But we need to go into the authorization middleware and we need to find this get accepted scopes and user roles static method on this class which at the moment is private so I need to make that public because I want to be able to call that from the authentication middleware and as we'll see at the moment inside this invoke what I want to do is I want to wrap this existing functionality that does all the authentication bits and pieces so let's just go through this so we get the target method we call that authorization middleware on the target method so this would be working out what Azure function is actually being called we're then working out what what roles that particular method actually needs so let's just explain this a bit clearer so over in our API functions it's looking for an attribute against the function here to see whether or not it needs to apply authorization or authentication to this particular method so if there's no decoration on a function that's what I'm trying to find out here so we're working out if the function has got any scopes or roles that need to be applied or that the user needs to possess in order to call that function so if we do find some decoration as we're checking here then we carry on and we authenticate so then i can just go and get the rest of this function out of there and place it all inside of that so we only try to authenticate the user now if the function is decorated so let's just save that and then what we need to do is move out the await for the next middleware out of that code right to the bottom so that it always calls the next middleware regardless of which flow we take through our authentication middleware and then obviously now because we're bypassing authentication that gives us a problem for authorization so we need to jump over back to the authorization middleware and in the invoke in here we need to work out if we've authenticated the user or not so we're just checking here so this will return null now if there is no authentication that's been performed so we're checking that first and making sure that that's not null before we then go and perform any authorization otherwise we just carry on and then last but not least i'm changing this authorized delegated permissions because i'm not using roles in my api i'm using scopes in azure b2c i can simplify this a little bit we can comment out anything to do with user roles let's just copy that comment that get rid of that and say if the user has this scope so now i'm only interested in checking the scopes for this user not the roles and then last but not least i can come over here and actually add that authorization decoration so this particular function will be authorized through azure b2c and you need to have the email access scope in order to call this function for instance that's how we can start securing our functions through various scopes so some of my other ones use uh, SQL Lite, so I could do the database access on those if I wanted to, but just to illustrate the point. So let's save that and run all of this back up again. That is up and running, so we can open up our request to API version, send that in, and we see now that we get our 200 response and our version coming back. That's what we would expect. So that is now correctly calling an undecorated API function. So let's call my protected API function. And we see that we get our correct 
unauthorized on that particular function because we're not sending in our bearer token. So let's run up our application as well. So our application is now up and running and our API is working. We're still seeing our version being returned. So let's go and sign in. And we can see that our restricted component is calling our API and it's returning back our name returned back from the API. And we can see that over here. So there is our response from our my B2C protected and we're also calling. So let's just have a look at the token call that we're making. So let's just copy that whole payload out a new file let's create a json file let's paste that in and let's format that up and we can see that now as well as our id token that we were previously getting with our authentication request we now get the access token that comes along and the scopes are there that we're requesting so the email access and the database access so let's just go and copy out that access token and go and have a quick nosy at that. Let's paste that in there. And we can see that the issuer is our B2C login, which is the B2C URL essentially. And the audience is our client ID of our application that we've registered. And the person who's logged in is the admin. So we can see that inside of our API if we need that information. We've also got their email address passed into us, which is nice. And we've got an expiry date, so we can go and check that to see when we need to go and refresh this. And we can see our scopes down here. So the scopes that we've been granted are email access and database access. So that's what our authorization middleware is checking for before we actually go and call our Azure function. It's checking that we've got the right scope being added to our particular user that's accessing our API. So that's it. We've secured our API. We've got a new Azure function in there that's secured using Azure B2C and checking for a given scope that we need the user to have. And so we can only call that function if the user is authorized to do so. So that's pretty sweet. We've now got our application all up and running on Azure B2C, including our API backend and all of this running on Azure Static Web Apps. So I think that's pretty cool, but let me know what you think in the comments. Is this something that you would use in your particular website or are you using some other mechanism? Let me know. And with that, I wanna thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video.